was a wet and grey one as well. A park in the same spot as yesterday, simply waiting. 8.30 a.m. Lillian is being trapped off by her chauffeur. Her umbrella is obscuring most of her face, and her being the only giveaway that says it's her. Well, that and the place and the car. <laughs> I find myself watching her more closely today. I don't know what it is yet, but I find her a little intriguing. I didn't know someone could even have so much spirit. Her expression itself is a mystery of, to me. Just so full of life and vigor. Ah, I probably should just focus on my job right now. I don't need to understand or scrutinize her to do it. She disappears into the college campus and I'm left with my foes. I close my eyes and lean back trying to clear my mind. College is out for the day. Students are streaming out and making an unimaginable racket while doing so. Everyone has umbrellas, which makes it hard for me to tell her apart from the others. The black bezel is here, which means... Yes, I think I see her walking towards it. Her two friends are standing a short distance away. They appear to be waiting for her? Again? Oh, she must have plans again. Although it appears her chauffeur has a different idea, she seems to be arguing with the man again. This time though, she's practically trapped inside the car as she hardly approaches to her friends. I wasn't sure if she had actually been told about the case, but at least her chauffeur had. Apparently, he had been given, given strict orders. This changed nothing for me though. Well, actually it's easier for me this way. This is obviously the safest option and my pay would be the same either way. I find myself sympathizing with her though. Today seems like another slow day. I sit in my car. Didn't we... Didn't we visit Sam? Did you stop visiting Sam? It's not a good idea, Ina. I sit in my car, parked in the usual spot, reading. I figure having something to do would make it easier to pass the day, but lately I have been too spent to read at home. Lilia was trouble off in the black bezel again, some four hours have passed since. I'm still not used to having a regular job schedule, my longest assignments last a couple of days at most. I find it sort of comforting actually. I don't have to worry about how long it's going to be till I come across a new work opportunity. Also, each contract is different. There's always an element of danger and unpredictability. I think about my current job, observing a teenage girl at college. Everything about her is alien to me. Lillian and her friends. I remember the way she looks when she talks to them. Her expression, how she laughs, how animated she is around them. Do they ever have anyone like that? It's strange to think about. I realized this was the first time I ever gave it any thought. My four day on a job, though so far nothing outside the norm, as usual. Garland has been pretty cautious lately. It's now straight to college and straight back. No dilly dallying allowed. College let out a few minutes ago. I'm scanning the stream of students searching for Lillian. I think I see her now. She steps out from the entrance, head bow walking slowly towards the car. Her friends are nowhere inside. Oh, that's sad. I guess I understand why it was hard to spot her. There is no arguing today. 
She merely climbs in the back of the bishop with her same look on her face. It's hard to watch. I'm not sure why. It's probably just strange to see her subdued like that. It's for her own good, I tell myself. Having made some tea, I put up my laptop. I take a cautious sip from the cup as a way for the OS to load. Though I want to avoid leaving too many traces on the internet, I still like browsing. I look up various blogs and do searches on all sorts of things. I'm always hungry for new information. I can see and read about places I have never been. Science, news and stories could all be found only a few clicks away. On the other hand, I never seem to understand social media. I tried making an account on this website once just as an experiment. I, I was clueless. It was very alien to me. I open a link to the website once again. I go to the search bar. My fingers hover over the keyboard for a moment before typing in Lillian Garland and pressing enter. I can't really explain my curiosity. I feel like I just want to know a little more about her. Apparently, she's using her real name and picture here. I guess people do that on these websites. Her profile picture shows her posing alone with a friend, grinning at the camera. I studied the picture for a while, noticing how carefree and casual she seems. After a moment's hesitation, I click on the photos link. There appear to be quite a few of them. Just by the thumbnails, I can tell that they are mainly of her and her friends, posing at various locations. I click on one of them and get an enlarged view. In it, Lillian has an arm trap around one of her friends. I think she's one of the girls I see with Lillian at the college and is smiling warmly at the camera. It's somehow different from her normal expression. It's less playful and more serene. I click next and get a very different image. It seems one of Lillian's friends took this one. In it she's stuffing her face with a pastry of some sort and looking very embarrassed at being caught. Hmm. I realize I'm smiling at the moment. What am I doing? I sigh and close the browser. It's getting late anyway. I should get some sleep. Oh, oh, you visit Sam. That's great, great to hear. I saw Sam today. He was looking somewhat better. I'm not dumb enough to think he's going to just recover to feel health like that. We didn't talk much, just an occasional question or remark. It's probably due to the recent argument we had. We don't trust ourselves to say too much. The doctor from Switzerland will be arriving soon. I just hope he really can do something for Sam. I'm not going to read today either. I'll just go to sleep now and read in the car tomorrow. Another long, slow day is ahead of me. During the last few days, Lillian has simply been brought to school and taken back as soon as classes are over. I can't help but wonder just what my role is in all this. I guess I didn't have one from the start. I'm only a shadow, a precautionary measure, which in her is all I'm supposed to do. I sigh and turn back to the window. Huh? Is she away? Just wait a second. Lillian? It isn't even Raquel. Why is she coming out? Lillian sneaking out of the college, looking every bit as suspicious delinquent, 
well that that's what you get from uh, denying her friends I mean of course if she goes randomly I I think she should be like talk to her dad in the morning or evening before school tomorrow I want to go out with my friends for coffee for an hour or two and that should be all right I know can show can show her just come later near the cafe I think that would be cool if she would let him know earlier but if they keep arguing like this well lovely lovely she glances in both directions before breaking out in a quick gate heading down the street I check for when my sudden quickly start the engine oh the music what in the world is this girl doing I follow her making sure to maintain a safe distance between us the music is so creepy I knew things were going to peacefully this girl just has to make my job more difficult she walks quickly, not looking back, some sort of determination evident in her demeanor. It's the same kind of music as at the beginning, I think. <clears throat> She's heading, oh of course, the shopping center. She's being a rebel. I resist the urge to groan out loud. She stops near a stream, leaning against the railing, she takes out her phone. I park my car a short distance away and drum on the string wheel. Hmm? In my rearview mirror, I see an soup spinning. Oh shit! The soup sips past my car and sips to so stop next to Lillian. They appear startled, her mouth opens in surprise as she lowers her phone. The back of the soup slides open and two men, of course, dressed entirely in black. Leap out as Liam backs out against the railing. I move quickly, reaching my check and whip out silence pistol. I leap out my car and take aim from over the door. One of the men has a hand over Liam's mob, stifling her while they try to trap her, strapping figure into the suit. There is no time to hesitate or worry about blowing my cover. I focus on the dark and fire once, twice. One of the men falls to the ground. Dead. The other guy, the one silencing Lillian, is thrown off for a moment and stumbles back. I take another shot. The boy hits the target, but it seems to have missed anything vital. I take him again. Huh? Return fire. There's a shooter in the soup. I can just probably make out a figure inside. Surviving a silence, the minute their fire jumps back in the soup and the vehicle spits off. I forgot the notion of a spy and took the gun away as I ran towards the stand Lillian. She's on the ground, her back against the railing, a look of incomprehension, a look of incomprehension on her face as she stares at the body a few feet from her. Some pedestrians in the area had stopped in the tracks so were murmuring among themselves. Ignoring them, I reach Leah and grab her arm and pull her to her feet. She looks at me with an expression of confusion and terror and tries to shrink away. Lillian, there's no time. Come with me, quickly. She holding her arm for me, I drag her on towards my car. Looking stone, she doesn't protest. I practically shove her into the passenger seat, slam the door shut and make my way around the car. The worst possible scenario. I couldn't quickly start the engine and tear away from the sidewalk. 